So the government's controversial public order bill has faced a setback in the House of Lords as amendments to give police more powers to stop protest uh, were defeated. Uh, ministers wanted to give the police the power to stop and search without suspicion near to a protest. They also wanted to shut down demonstrations before they become disruptive in a bid to stop tactics such as slow marching and blocking roads. Critics, however, called the plan to shut down protests before they escalate an attack on the right to protest. And on Tuesday night, peers in the House of Lords rejected it by 254 votes to 240. Joining me now to discuss this further is Director of the Academy of Ideas, Baroness Claire Fox. Thanks for joining me tonight. Could you, could you begin by telling us what is so wrong uh, with this bill? Well, there's an awful lot wrong with it because although it's been motivated by the infuriating way that Just Stop Oil and various Extinction Rebellion type protests have, you know, disrupted the lives of ordinary people, when you actually look at what the bill says, they won't, it won't be aimed at them. It'll be aimed at anyone ever who wants to protest. And there's a lot of very draconian aspects of it. I'm afraid the laws didn't stop it. Um, it, it just simply amended it to get rid of the worst aspects of some of the clauses that were in the bill, and that's gone back to the House of Commons, and they'll decide whether they accept what the Lord suggested or not. But, you know, you've just had a very interesting conversation, and at the end there, it was all about language matters. And language does matter. And here we had a bill in which the whole premise is that the state and the police could use the phrase serious disruption to really take away every simple liberty of anyone whether they were protesting against, I don't know, drag queen story hour or whether it was against, um, you know, low traffic neighbourhoods or just stop oil. And they didn't define what serious disruption was. They just refused to define it. And, and they were sort of said, well, you know what we mean. So it would be left up to the police to say what they thought serious disruption was. And they refused to pin it down. So that was very dangerous. Well, that's a real problem, isn't it? And we've seen this before with the, the police crime and sentencing bill where we had... Uh, the, the government were effectively saying if a, if a protest was too noisy, the police could arbitrarily decide that they would shut it down because that didn't get through. So now there are these amendments to this bill presently. So why can't the government see the importance of, of, of really saying what they mean here? Well, one of the difficulties is that um, I think this is more a reflection of a policing crisis, because actually, if you look at the public order legislation that we already have on the statute books, it is more than draconian, I might say but well, certainly more than serious enough for the police to be able to actually arrest and stop the demonstrations that we have. And I mean, after all, just stop oil, just stop protesting because they said they kept getting arrested. They obviously do have the law at the moment that they could use. But there was something wrong with the fact that the police seem to be rather reticent and hesitant to intervening. And so what the problem we've got with the political uh, establishment at the moment is when they don't know what to do, instead of actually going out and either enforcing laws that we already have and then convincing institutions they've got to do their job, they bring in more laws. I mean, it seems ludicrous to me. But think of the consequence of this. You talked about one of the amendments of past, which was suspicion-less stop and search. And I used the example in the speech that I gave of what it felt like during lockdown when ordinary law-abiding citizens were stopped by the police if they sat down and had a coffee on a bench I was using the example of care workers who'd done just that. And when they kind of said, oh, don't, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, what, what's wrong with you? Then they were being threatened with arrest. And I was making the point that if you're stopped and searched when you're just literally walking in the vicinity of where a demonstration might be about to be held. And when we actually asked the minister, well, why is it suspicion less stop and search where there's no suspicion? He said, well, sometimes the police don't have any suspicions. And therefore, they should stop and search. I mean, this is arbitrary power of the sort that you would not expect to see in a modern democracy. So although I'm on the one hand, you know, very hesitant of uh, using the Lords to block the government, because after all, we're not elected and the House of Commons is the elected House. And secondly, I do know that there are times when people get frustrated at the inability of the police to deal with things. I do want people to look carefully at what the government have been trying to affect in this way and I think that's a one of the things that we kicked out just one thing was funny was they they were trying to bring in these serious disruption prevention orders and actually that's gone ahead but one amendment that did pass was to raise the trigger because the way it was was that you could literally have dropped your kids off at a demonstration 
that then got violent later. And you, as the driver, the parent, could be smacked with a serious uh, uh, um, uh, disruption prevention order, which could basically mean that you're criminalised for a year. And as you've made clear, the laws are already in place to stop vandalism, for instance, the kind of thing that Just Stop Oil and Insulate Britain were, were up to. So the laws are there already. What does it say, though, about this government? Because this government seems to be very down on the idea of the right to protest. At the same time, they have their online safety bill. And even that phrase safety is, is suggestive of a belief that words can be the same thing as violence. Is it just the case that the government are not very good when it comes to free expression? Well, I, I mean, I absolutely uh, agree with you on that. And I think that one of the ways that they get away with it is that we've seen a struggle. I mean, you've written about it in books that you've written on free speech, where you're given this choice between do you want to be safe or do you want to be free? And the difficulty is, is that they deploy this, we will protect you against all potential horrible actions or incidents. And that's maybe in terms of protest, you know, they might disrupt you. Um, and and so on and so forth. And by the way, if they're sitting on the M25, I say the police should drag them off and take them away, right? So we're not talking about uh, me just like turning a blind eye to anything. I'm saying that it's very dangerous when the government's immediate response is to call safety as opposed to freedom. And we see in the online safety bill that they are absolutely um getting carried away with themselves, a bill which should have been very discreetly only targeted at protecting children. And that's what most people are interested in. How can we protect children? Because it is true that children are a category of people that we make exceptions in terms of liberty for. We don't give them freedom to roam around. We look after them and we have safeguarding measures. But the problem is they've let this spill into adult society. And the online safety bill, which they say they've got rid of lawful uh, but harmful um, uh, clauses, so it's not as threat to say uh, free speech at all. Actually, reading it, it's frightening it, what we want to say online. Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to have to go. We have run out of time, but I really appreciate you joining me.